Hello, everyone, and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week, we will be talking about updates on DE10 Nano clone boards, the Konami X-Men arcade game, an interesting way of adding replay value to the games in your library, and more. Also, check out my channel sponsor, Mr. Add-ons, a place where you can get all your Mr. needs, things like full Mr. setups, accessories, IO boards, and more. Now let's get to the news. Mr. Vendor Antonio Villena started selling a complete Mr. FPGA custom kit that uses a DE10 Nano alternative from QM Tech. If you are not aware, there are now companies that are developing DE10 Nano alternative boards that are compatible with the Mr. FPGA software. QM Tech is the first one out with a board, and Taki Uran is releasing another one soon. Unfortunately, this kit from Antonio Villena is sold out at the moment, but you can sign up for email updates for when they come back in stock. The kit includes the QM Tech board with built-in 128MB SD RAM, the custom I.O. board for analog DGA and SCART output, USB hub with 6 ports, DB9 joystick port that can be used for snack peripherals, and more. The full kit costs $349. Antonio also plans to sell the kit without the QM Tech board for those who already own the board. If you're curious about the QM Tech DE10 Nano alternative, I created a video on it talking about the good and the bad. Last week, Hotego showed off Konami's Turtles in Time booting in the JTS Riders Core. Now, it looks like we are also going to get Konami's X Men arcade game. This is an amazing beat em up released back in 1992. No info on when it will be available for the Mr. FPGA, but it's great to know that the game is coming. Hotego does say that the game is booting up correctly and it is even playable, but there is still more work to do. On the Patreon, he discusses the development journey for this game, so check it out if you want to find out the technical details. The X post, or Twitter post, or whatever you want to call it, shows the 4 player version of the game running on a CRT. There was also a 6 player version of the game that used a dual screen setup. It would be interesting to see if that version will also come to Mr. and how it will be handled. This is a game that I always wish had a port to either a 16-bit or 32-bit console, but sadly, it never came during those consoles' lifetime. However, there is a homebrew port being developed now by developer Hot Rod X for the Sega Saturn. It's looking great so far and you can download the latest build to check it out yourself. Over the weekend, Otego did release a JTS Riders Alpha Core that supports X-Men. There are a lot of issues and the release was for Patreon members who access a Discord so they can help test the core. In this alpha iteration of the core, all PCM sounds are completely missing and there are graphical glitches. Core developer Pierco is back and is working on another core. This one is for the arcade game Pandora's Palace by Konami. It's a single screen platformer where you must make your way from the top to the bottom of the screen. Some simulation screenshots were shown and Pirko says that he hooked up the P-ROM and fixed values for the color resistors. Now he needs to look at sprite decoding. Here are some other updates Otego spoke about relating to the Mr. FPGA. For Turtles in Time, the game currently boots up on the JT Riders core, but sprites are not visible because one chip is still missing in the core. Furtech is currently reverse engineering this chip. Schematics for Racing Force, X-Men, Vendetta, and The Simpsons have been updated, and Hotego did plan on fixing a bug on the Neo Geo Pocket Core that prevents games from booting up, but it seems that work on X-Men has been taking up most of his time. There are more details regarding these updates and analog pocket updates on Hotego's Patreon. Over the week, Taki Uran posted some updates regarding the Mr. FPGA products he's developing. One post showed off the packaging for the products. In this post, we can see the Sega Master System themed packaging for the I.O. board and the SD RAM. There is another package behind them, but you cannot see the label. I'm going to assume it's the packaging for the DE10 Nano alternative board. Another post talked about the all-in-one Mr. FPGA consoles in development, and there is some very interesting information. This is what the post says. Printing some flagship console shells this weekend for prototyping. In the meantime, I have a secret for you. I've never said the FPGA handle was the only portable in this lineup of four. The flagship is portable, and it's going to be an awesome device to enjoy with friends. So it looks like there is more than one portable form factor being developed in addition to the handheld. When I say form factor, I don't mean a different handheld form factor design like the differences between the original Game Boy Advance versus the Game Boy Advance SP. 
The wording on the post specifically says portable, so it looks like it's an all-in-one design that you can carry around and has everything you need, including the screen. This is hinted at more in a question asked by a user. This user asks, please source 7.9 inch iPad mini screens. And Taki responds with, too small. So we at least know the flagship will come with a screen larger than that. The exact form factor was not given, but there's the possibility of it being similar to this PS1 with an attachable screen design posted by another user. But one thing that I feel would be really awesome for me is a laptop design. A built-in keyboard would be great for computer cores. Moving on to the DE10 Nano alternative and accessories, we are getting some bad news. The boards were supposed to be ready for sale and shipment on August 16th. However, there is a shipment delay on the main board port connectors. Taki says that he'll try to have an accurate sale and shipment date by the 15th. I wonder what this means for the power supply. Last week, Taki said that providing power supplies for all regions will cause a delay of 5 days. So instead of delaying the products, Taki decided not to include a power supply and instead replace it with a Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi adapter. Hopefully the delays aren't too bad. Alan Tipper posted on X about having an automation setup for randomized ROM generation and launching for Tap2 and the Mr. FPGA. When I first read about this, I was a bit confused because Wizzle already has a script that will launch a random game and has that feature built into Tap2. However, after looking further into it, I fell into a rabbit hole of randomized ROM generation. What I found was that there are tools out there that will create ROM hacks of games and randomize various attributes and content of the ROM giving different ways to replay a game. For example, you can have a tool to create a ROM hack that will randomize what boss you will fight at the end of a level, randomize enemy behavior, change locations of items, and so much more. This is the randomization that Alan Tipper was speaking about, and this project will give the Mr. FPGA the ability to generate and launch these ROM hacks. Check out the GitHub to find out more information about the project and randomizing tools in general. QM Tech released the schematics for their I.O. board designed for their DE10 Nano alternative. They mentioned that it is compatible with both the model that has integrated SD RAM and the model with no RAM. The post did not mention when it will go on sale, but someone replied to the post saying that they received a DM from QM Tech saying they will be ready to sell before September 1st, both the case and I.O. boards. I've also contacted QM Tech about the supply for the DE10 Nano clone boards as they've been sold out for a while. They are going to go back in stock but couldn't give me an exact date. They just said that new batches will come in the following weeks. Several people have commented about the boards being sold out so I wanted to give people an update. So that's it for this episode. Please also try to support Swords, the maintainer of the Mr. Project and other Mr. Developers and contributors on support platforms such as Patreon and Ko-fi. Their hard work allows us to enjoy this amazing project. I also provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure to also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in block form and to get more retro-related content. And if possible, support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.